Guard Control 2, the revered 1990 greater threat. If it weren't for the tedious chore of gathering resources from planet surfaces, it would be a revival to celebrate. As humanity takes its first step into the stars, we find we're not alone, and that many of our neighbors are delightfully stupid. There's the pathetically needy Taiwan, the obsessively bureaucratic measured, the sleazy race of con artists who are basically Watto from Star Wars The Phantom Menace, and plenty more. Each has a distinct style and personality that's brought to life by diverse character models and fun voice acting. And that blundering into interesting things is a key part of being a Federation citizen. Plenty of jokes about why every member of each alien... Recall the captain. Tell him that he's needed. By introducing an entirely new and mysterious universe full of colorful, hilarious aliens and bringing back the intense arcadey space battles, Star Control Origins gets about two-thirds of the way toward recapturing the magic of Star Control 2, the revered 1992 adventure about forming an interstellar alliance against a greater threat. If it weren't for the tedious chore of gathering resources from planet surfaces, it would be a revival to celebrate. as humanity takes its first step into the star, basically Watto from Star Wars The Phantom Menace, and plenty more. Each has a distinct style and personality that's brought to life by diverse character models and fun voice acting. And that wandering into interesting things is a key part of being a Federation citizen. Meeting them and hearing their absurdist and occasionally laugh out loud humor is Star Control Origins' greatest asset, and it's effectively used to cover up some of its deficiencies. There are plenty of jokes about why every member of each alien race looks and sounds exactly like you when you run out of fuel come at the cost of listening to the Taiwan's terrible Star Trek fanfic gets old pretty quickly. Apart from a few points where you can choose to accept the decline and offer from an alien and then face consequences that have to be resolved through a side quest, the overall story is set. That lack of control over the outcome is a reminder that despite its open galaxy map, Star Control is an adventure game series, not an RPG series. Which is fine, except that there's less value to replaying this 35 hour story. Space is where the real action is, and the punchy, top down arcadey space combat is the most fun I had in Star Control Origins. These ones you bounce off planet's gravity wells, warp through wormholes, and pick up stat boost items. Judging a target's trajectory well enough to peg it with a relatively slow-moving missile while simultaneously shifting your own ship to avoid incoming fire takes some skill. It makes a lot of sense that this head-to-head -head combat was what Stardock chose to break out as its fleet battles multiplayer mode. You can collect a fleet of ships to send into combat before you endanger your flagship, which must survive or it's game over, but I find the vast majority of those too weak to be useful. It doesn't help that you can't see the capabilities start to finish, which takes some fun out of upgrades. That's bizarre, especially since multiplayer includes a flexible shipbuilder tool that allows you to piece together a custom craft from a healthy assortment of parts. Where Star Control Origins really messes up is in failing to learn the lessons of the original Mass Effect. Remember how just about everybody loved it except for the parts where you had to drive the Mako landing vehicle around empty planets? Star Control Origins is a lot like that, except its annoying driving makes up a greater percentage of the After a simple landing minigame, you zip across the colorful and visually interesting landscapes of your choice of what must be thousands of planets on the galaxy map. But pretty much all there is to do there is drive over glowing resource pickups. Just doing this would be dull, but the physics on this thing are annoyingly bouncy and have a habit of pointing you 180 degrees from where you wanted to go if you hit a bump. Also, combat on the ground is absolutely dismal. Wildlife barely reacts to being shot, and the security drones you encounter are so incompetent at hitting moving targets that they can be completely ignored or easily circle strafed to death. But you have to do this a lot because it's where the vast majority of your money comes from. So has intruded on Squid Destruction Zone Alpha! Star Control Origins does a great hence arcadey space battles. But everything you're forced to do on a planet's surface is boring at best and an annoying chore at worst, and that kills a lot of momentum. Third of the campaign, when money became mostly irrelevant and the focus shifted to its strong points of story and space combat. For more, check out our reviews of Frozen Synapse 2, Two Point Hospital, and The Banner Saga 3. And for everything else, stick with IGN.